Hey guys, this is Ryan Benjamin. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to ink Batman, and I'm going to talk about some of the strategies and certain techniques that I've been using, and certain couple things that's on my head that I think you guys should, should know coming into this. So enjoy this video. For anyone that wants to learn how to ink, what do you recommend? Ink, inking is a beast. Inking is a, a totally different way of, of applying your skills that if your heart isn't into it, I'm, I will tell you right now, stay away from it, okay? Because if, it, although it is good to learn the inking style because you have to understand how, what your pencils are, what, how, how you're penciling and how you're preparing your pencils so your inker can, can understand what line quality and line work that you're doing, that's good. But I've seen too many artists who's trying to pencil and ink and color all at the same time and then their artwork is really shaky. So what I like to tell people is this, pencil first, practice penciling first, understand anatomy, understand shading, understand cross hatching, understand value, understand proportions, understand all these things before you decide to pick up a pen and or a quill and ink because if you're inking on a shaky object the inkings are inking is going to look shaky then the colors are going to make it look even shakier sometimes i've seen colors save shaky pencils and inks i've seen that but it still looks kind of shaky so i i coming from my experience i say stick with one practice one and understand one if your heart is into inking, then ink. Ink 90% of the time and just pencil 10% of the time. Don't give up penciling because you want to understand anatomy at the same time because inking, the part of inking is understanding the, the fundamentals and the principles of, 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 of penciling. You have to have a good sense of it to be a good inker. But what makes you a good inker is that you have steady hands. You understand the materials that you're working with. You understand how to push blacks and whites, how to create gray areas, how to how to create nice little cross hatching lines and keep it looking steady and consistent and smooth. Once you understand those things, then it makes you a better inker. You might be a messy inker. Understand how to make messy art. Uh, understand how to make messy lines. You have to understand all that stuff, but you applying this messy line on top of a sound structured anatomy. So you have to understand all these things before you decide to, oh, I'm going to ink this. Okay. So inking is kind of finicky. It's one of those things that if you're not, if your heart isn't into it, then stay away from it. Stick with penciling. If your heart's in colors, then stick with colors. Um, but shy away from doing all three because I promise you it will weaken your portfolio. If you have okay pencils and horrible inks, that just takes your portfolio, you know, a couple not notches down. So you don't want that to happen. So, so. If you have a port portfolio and you try and show any comic book work or anything like that, and you're better at penciling, only show pencils. Don't show any inks. If you're if you're good at colors, show your colors on top of someone else who has better pencils and better inks than you. Uh, if you're a good inker and you want to, you, but you're shaky with your pencils, ink another penciler who has stronger pencils than you. If you can find the pencil work of, of another artist online, get it, download it, create a blue line uh, uh, image of that and ink that. That can that will absolutely help you way better than you doing your pencils, inks and colors in all three stages are shaky. So, so um, and I understand because as an artist, I know what it's like when you just want to do, you just want to perform, or you're like, you have this idea in your head, and you just want to get it out, and you just want to draw, you know, do it all, and da 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 da, da. That's, that's fine. Um, but for a portfolio piece, you want to put your strongest foot forward, you want to put your best foot forward. So I would stay away from inking if you're not as strong of an inker 
if you're way stronger if the pen penciler only show pencils um, and, 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 and the only thing other thing I can say there are other techniques I can talk about but it'll take another two hours what I would say is you have to understand how to pivot your hands how to how to control the depth of the tool that you're using how to rotate the page how to angle your body your shoulder you have to understand all these things when you're inking so techniques is key technique is what's going to keep, keep you grounded as an inker and get you locked into your 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 area your your zone that's your your, your and, and make you perform and keep you going and make make it solid and under, understanding the ink quality that you're using the types of inks you're using is another thing so you have to test you have to you, you know play around with it changing from a pen to a quill to a brush to a marker to a fat sharpie all these things are parts of parts of the tools that you want to learn so if you want to you can take my workshop comic pro boot, boot camp um it's comic pro boot camp you can take that um and and you know you can learn how to ink and how to better yourself as an inker you know because that's something that uh, uh, we've been working on with uh, Will Sportacio and Carlos Dianda. So we've been doing that for a while, for a couple of years. And, and Alex Sinclair comes in with his colors and makes it even better. So, <laughs> but um, but yeah, take, take, take the workshop and just try your best. Hey guys, if you're interested in learning from Ryan, he just put a tutorial going through the fundamentals of drawing up on Proko.com. In it, he teaches the skills that he uses every day as a professional artist. The course has about one hour of lectures and three hours total of unnarrated demos. There are also assignments and exercises you can do to improve your craft. If you'd be interested in learning more, check out the link in the description. Thanks, and back to the video. How do you know when you're good enough to start taking professional work? I'll tell you a true story. When I was in the eighth grade I was already doing commissions I was doing commissions for other students that wanted me to draw pictures and I would only charge them 50 cents at the time um, I would charge them 50 cents just to, get, just to draw a, a nice portrait of their mom or whoever they wanted to um, and it was one of those things that I did it was when I'm young and part of that was hey I can do it and I wanted I want to try it out so let's 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 just go into it let's just start doing this so the way I kind of look at it from what I've learned throughout the years is that fear can hold you back from progress fear can hold you back from from growth so you have to take risks you have to take that chance even if you make mistakes even if you know you're going to make make a mistake even if you're so so not confident with yourself and you're at the point where you you just want to just hide or you don't want to show any of your art you still have to break out of that and show it you need to do something because Sitting in a corner and just drawing is one thing, but when you draw in front of other people, there's certain freedom that comes out of that, a certain growth that comes out of it because you 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 gain this this this, this experience within this gray area because you 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 gain this this experience for performing of performing in front of an audience. Um, it loosens up all your rusty areas. I say just take the risk and just do it. Don't wait. Don't let opportunities go, go by and you don't take advantage of it. You need to jump on these opportunities and perform and do as much as you can. And the one thing I would say is to not ever let money or the the value of your art or your time get in the way of the opportunity um because if you don't take the chance and you don't do it then you don't gain experience and experience is 
the most valuable tool that you're going to have in art because you need to have experience to 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 keep moving forward and art is a forward progress medium it's something that you 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 use to not only build yourself and motivate yourself but you build an audience and you motivate that audience and you and so you ha- you have to be able to to, to, to constantly move forward and constantly evolve, constantly change yourself. Um, and, and don't restrict yourself from thinking, from expanding, from trying to, to, to better yourself and better the other people around you at the same time. How do you make art financially sustainable before you start making money? The life of a starving artist. <laughs> um, I, I've been there. Um, um, I used to... I remember when I would open my fridge and all I had was water and crackers in my fridge. Um, so I've been there, struggling to pay $700 a month. Struggling to pay $700 a month. Um, it's it's something that many artists find themselves in there. Um, but one thing I will say is one of this advice that uh, that was handed down to me from when I first came to the industry is that your art is the platform that's going to deliver you and take you far into the future. Um, consistency is key, and if you don't perform consistent art that's top notch, then you're pretty much shoehorning yourself you're putting yourself in a corner where you might get one or two jobs but you won't get repeat jobs over and over you want to be able to be able to put yourself in a position where you are well sought after you want to put yourself in a position where you have multiple directors multiple producers knocking on your door wanting you to 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 be to just put a little bit of touch on their project come on board help me out we love your vision we love your art come on board and help us out and they can give you contracts and everything so you the, the thing is that you want to be able to get yourself there. the only way you're going to get there is to consistently perform your task for consistently um uh better yourself as an artist um, and, and, and it, it, this is these, this, these are the steps that literally takes you out of the, the, the poor house okay if you, if you if you're okay if you have, if you're well funded or you, you're okay with being broke or you're okay with just surviving and struggling that's one thing and you just want to sit here you just want to draw hey that's that's you because I, I wouldn't say it's bad. I wouldn't say it's good either because art is freedom. Art is expression. So if that's how you choose to express your life and that's what you choose to express, uh, uh, you know, your art and your talent, then go for it, you know. But at the same time, you have to look at your surroundings. You have to look at, you know, your, the, your support system that you have. You have to look at all these things and you have to figure out how, how am I going to participate in this? How am I going to use my art to participate and drive and spearhead this 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 support system that, that I have, um, you know, or I need, you know. So you have to think about all these things and, you know, get your mind right. Figure out how, how am I going to use my art to generate some form of income. One thing I can say about me is that um, in the path of building my career, I realized that, hey, I can make money with my hobby. That's, that's pretty cool, you know? So that's one thing I try to tell a lot of people is, it, to me, I feel like that's successful. I, f- I feel su- successful just from that. It doesn't matter how much I'm making. It just, it's the fact that I have the freedom to, to do my art, to do what I need to do, and still generate an income out of it so i've been on both sides i've been on the poor side and i've been on the side where it's just like this you know godly amount of money just coming in so i've seen both sides of the spectrum and i think i think i can talk about this a little bit 
Um, uh, and I, I'm choosing not to be in the poorhouse. I don't want to be in a poorhouse. Uh, I never ever want to be in a poorhouse. Um, you just have to, you know, one thing I can say is, is that um, artists, because of all this freedom that exists in art and, and the, the ability to express is that you just want to do, you just want to express. So you kind of put aside this business side of you and you just in the, the art in the house of just just perform, just do, just perform, just do. And the money comes in, it comes in and you're not too concerned about that. I think a well balance uh, of of both performance and business is where you where you need to go. If you're all business and you're not performing that that much. That's one thing, you know, um, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. You know, just say you can handle that, you know, um, but I would say don't give up on 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 performing because performing is what keeps you connected with the, with the audience. Performing is what keeps you relevant. Performance is what keeps you crisp and sharp. So you have to have a well balance of both. But at the same time, you need to generate some form of income. So you have to find a way based on current technology to, you know, put yourself in that, situ that situation where you're generating some form of income. You know, um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to struggle, but at the same time, you know, this industry does have, it does comes in waves. There are times when you just, you know, it's a crap ton of work and then there are times you can go three months and there's no work. You know, it can happen, you know, so, you know, you just have to, be able to understand what you're getting into, how to how to balance it, and how to control it. Uh, and is, I can only tell it to you from my experience and from what I understand in the industry. But we're all individuals, and we're all coming into this with our individual minds and individual action, individual directions. So you want to be able to to adapt and take some of what I'm saying and make it work for you. You might have find a, a way to make it work really good for you. And then some, some of you might struggle to figure it out, to figure it out. You know, I think that's all part of growth. That's all part of, um, you know, this, this, this market of freedom that we're, we're, we're tapping into and we're trying to connect and express and do all these things. So how do you move past fundamentals into making commercial art? There are, there, there's a time, this this is one of the struggles that I have um, because I came from the fine arts background, so I understand, you know, when you look at a blank canvas and you need to just perform and to create and just make something amazing out of it. And then on the other side, I've come from the I've also came from the camp where a script is handed to me, and I have to, and it gives me guidelines, and I have to just perform. I have to craft my skills and my art to fit these guidelines and execute. So I've seen a little bit of both. Um, the problem I was expressing earlier is that I have been performing off of scripts for years and years and years. So going back into the, the blank canvas stage and just figuring out something to do Sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to get my head wrapped around it, but I don't like to, to go too long without doing that. I like to have some form of balance between both where I'm doing just normal work and then there's stuff I want, I really want to do. So I try to balance both. I try to, I try not to get rusty on, on either one of them. Um, because the, 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 the longer I go, the longer anyone goes, the more rusty they're going to get. If you, if you don't go, uh, if you go about four or five years and you don't do any push-ups and then you suddenly do some push some push-ups, your arms are going to, you know, it's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good. You know, you're going to be rusty. You're going to do two push-ups and then you're going to give up because you're going to, I haven't done push-ups in five years. So you don't want to get to that stage. You want to have some, you want to stay warm and keep warm and constantly push yourself. So what I like to do is part of that motion, part, part of that energy of um, staying relevant and just crafting my skills is I try my best to learn from all the artists around me. 
no matter the art style, no matter what they do, I look at, at other artists, I look at how they do certain things, and I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of see how they, they how, what their line quality is. And I look at this one, oh, I love how they, they apply their colors. Oh, I love how this person builds something in 3D. Oh, I love how this person paints something. So you just kind of look at all of it, and then you try to incorporate it into your art style. And for me, that, the, the just that, avenue that uh, direction of getting up and just trying a different art style that I've never tried before or doing something I've ever tried as well. it helps me crisp up you know my my core art style the things that I do on the daily um, and and when I when a job comes in and a job might require me to go a little bit more cartoony I can do that if it requires me to go a little bit more more stylized, I can do that. If it requires me to go a little bit more uh, more comic book, uh, you know, tra 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 traditional comic book, I can do that. If it requires me to go paint and painter style, I can do that. You know, it's because I've been jumping around from different styles. I haven't been. I try my best not to stick with one style and only go in that direction. Um, I think the reason why is because I'm pretty much really comfortable with myself as an artist pretty much real comfortable with me as a creator or a creative person um that i don't need to to uh to to, to stick with one style because there's there are many many styles out there and for me to just stick with one style means that i'm pretty much you know putting myself into one box i don't want to be that artist that puts myself into one box and then at the same time on the other hand I have a ton of ideas in my head. I want to just perform. I just want to just express myself. You give me a piece of paper, I can take it left, I can take it right, I can take it up, I can take it down, I can do whatever I want to with this and just make something happen with this. This is where I think where a lot of artists need to be to stay relevant throughout, throughout their career because if they're only doing one job, one style, at one company, what happens when they pull the rug from you? You're you're gonna go to another company saying you can only do this one style, this one job, in this one direction. You know, you, what if they they're requiring you to jump from one team to the next and you can't do it because you haven't been performing or you haven't been practicing other skills? You have to be able to to to, to you have to be malleable. You have to be able to. To be adaptable to any team that you jump on, that you're 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 introduced to, because you never know what can come up in the future. Um, true story. Um, there was a company I went to um, a while back. Actually, it was Sony. I went to work at Sony, um, and when I joined the th when I joined that team, I. I remember walking around introducing myself to all the other artists and just getting to meet people and just happened, you know, who, who are you? Let's go to lunch, you know, that type of thing. Um, and part of that, I was asking them, what do you do? What can you do? And I remember asking this one person, he said, oh, I'm, I'm a texture artist. It's like, that's all you do? He's like, yeah, that's all I do is I just texture. I said, okay. And I went to the next one. What do you do? Oh, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a rigger. I said, all you do? Yeah, that's all I do. It's okay, okay, all right. I went to this guy, what do you do? I'm a modeler, that's what I do, but I just modeled. Can you draw? Can you animate? Do any of this? And they say, no, I can't do that. I just I just model stuff. So I'm like, okay, cool. In two weeks after that, they laid off 20 of those people and they only kept five of us. And all five of us can multitask. All of us. All the others were just they can only do one thing. So the team, so so Sony pulled all, uh, five of us on one in one bucket in one team, and then they started to rebuild that team around us. And they started to get to because they made us the core of that of that department, and then they just started to rebuild around us. So to me, when I saw that, I'm like, wow, okay, they they, they, they there's not much they can do with the other artists. You know, they can only do one thing. And what if the job changes? What if a, a new a new direction comes in from up top that says hey okay we're we're moving in another direction blah 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 we need to start doing this and doing that so things like that can happen 
I, I've see, I've personally seen it. Um, you know, uh, I, and not just with me. I've seen it with other teams. I've seen it. You know, too many times. So um, things like that can happen. So I say you need to be able to to to, to diversify. To you need to be able to to adapt and and just keep branching off and just. Keep, Play around with as many art styles as you can because that's gonna it's only gonna help you in the future.